It's Madden NFL 24, where we've got ourselves a Super Bowl 20 rematch. It's the Chicago Bears and the New England Patriots, and it's all up next. From the area known as Patriot Place, EA Sports set for football at Gillette Stadium in Foxborough. Coming up, we got a good matchup on tap here as it'll be the Chicago Bears taking on the New England Patriots. Along with Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon, And for both of these teams that we're going to see, Charles, the future is kind of right now. You know, this is something you only see a handful of times in an NFL season where you've got a rookie quarterback versus a rookie quarterback. And I think a lot of that has to do with the era we're in now. Because our dads, they didn't see rookie quarterbacks go against each other. In fact, it could be two, three years before they even saw the playing field. Nowadays, you get drafted, they expect you to play earlier. And these guys as competitors, they'll take their lumps early, but they'd rather be on the field. Here's Cairo Santos now, ready to get this one started. And we are underway in Foxborough. And he won't quite make it to the 25. So here come the Patriots to take over on offense. And they will be led out by the youngster, the rookie, their QB. I tell you what, when he is on schedule for that week, secondaries take notice because you've got to stay alert back there on every snap. A truly powerful arm, one that's capable of challenging any level of the defense on any given play. That's why so many scouts preach arm talent when preparing for the NFL draft. A quarterback with arm strength to make every throw in the book, he's an asset to have in any offense. They'll start on the ground with Gibson, and he'll take this ahead for about four. Second down coming up. Well, the end of all that hitting and hollering, it was a four-yard run, so the offense is going to go back to Huddle and feel pretty good about themselves. Defensively, you have to feel okay because you didn't let it turn into a bigger run, but the goal, shut it down for two yards or less. That's when you start to feel good about yourselves. Second and six. They'll find Juju Smith-Schuster. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. 13 yards as the quick slant keeps the drive moving. And every time you step on a field, coaches are always going to talk about how important tackling is in a ball game. In this one, especially so. You can't allow these guys to break free and get extra yards after contact, but that's exactly what happens here. That can't continue as this game goes on. And they'll take this to the other side of midfield before going out of bounds. 11 more on that one and another first down. We use the word relentless a lot with guys who are aggressive on the field. In this case, it really fits, doesn't it? How about his ability to break tackles and his feet never stop moving? So into Bear territory now. This is first and 10 at the 48-yard line. He'll look to throw. Open man right side of Smith-Schuster complete. And he gets it inside the 35 and just shy of the 30. 17 more yards on that one as they keep the drive rolling. Well, coaches always talk about finding balance on offense. I don't think you can get much more balance than this. Big time run, big time pass. A one-two combination looked pretty good. How about that? Let's see, if they, let's see if they can continue to take that kind of a punch, though. Line of scrimmage, the 31 now on first and 10. He'll drop to throw. The throw here right sideline falls incomplete. So it looks like they still have some fight in them on this series because it seemed like things were headed for the red zone. But if this defense gets two more stops, they can keep them out of that area. Second and ten. Now back to throw. And his throw here is incomplete. 
That's a big force incompletion there to bring up third and long. And this defense can still salvage a little momentum by forcing them to kick a field goal. Because just a few plays ago, they looked like they were headed towards the end zone. This offense was on the move. Now two straight incompletions have them looking at third and ten. They'll stick with the passing game as he looks to throw. And he is caught. And he's going to have another first down as the tackle's made here at the Bears' 18. 12 yards there as they move the chains. Well, this is what you want to see from your rookie quarterback on an opening drive, Charles. He looks cool. He looks calm. He looks collected in marching them down the field. And, Brandon, I just think the game continues to change and evolve because we're calling these guys rookies. But, you know, they throw the football so much at a younger level now, way more so than what we saw when guys came into the league when you and I came through. And also just the way in particular to him, Charles, how he handles himself in meetings, just so professional, mature. Looks like he's been in the league five years. Yeah, he cares about the game. He cares about his performance, and it's showing. Back to throw now on second and ten. Yeah, he's got it. And the Patriots are looking at first and goal as he's tackled all the way down at the two-yard line. A lot of precision being shown on this opening drive. They've been methodical. They've been crisp. And as a reward, they're going to be set up with an early first and goal. A terrific opening drive has them knocking on the door. First and goal. On the ground with a tight end. And trying to push forward, but he is going to be stuffed up in the backfield. That's going to go as a loss of one on first down. I like the idea to mix it up from time to time because, let's face it, you can't be predictable. But the execution was a little lacking on this one, right? They might want to go back to the drawing board with that call. Stevenson. That is over the line and into the end zone for a Patriot score. Ramondre Stevenson, a three-yard touchdown run. And the Patriots get the upper hand as they're on the board first here this afternoon. And they would not be denied on the ground, powering it in just one play after they got stopped short. And how about how many tight ends were on the field? Because in today's NFL, we think of the tight end more as a pass catcher. But this group... They tell them you've got to be able to run block to stay on this team. And they committed to it and got it done right there. An extra point by Ryland up and good. And it's now a 7-0 game. The kicking unit out for the Patriots as they send this one away. A solid return, pretty good field position. They'll start at the 32. So here are the Bears now for their opening drive. And they will be led out by their rookie quarterback. For every rookie prospect, there are always nerves involved in this moment. Running your team out to start a game. But there's a reason they brought him in. We're willing to make him their starter today. They believe he can overcome those nerves and lead his team to a victory. We saw him do it at the collegiate level and really make himself into a leader and someone you can envision doing the exact same thing here in the NFL. From the 32 now, here's first and 10. On the ground, it's Swift to start the drive. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. Give him 10 yards there, and about by the nose of the football, he's going to have a first down. Defensively, they were in the 3-4, and that O-line just dominated the D-line there. Let's go with a verbal telestrator here, because that D-line has a nose over the center, and it has a two defensive end over the offensive tackles. That means the guards don't have anyone over the top of them. That creates a natural bubble inside. Where they sprint upfield, take on the inside linebackers, and if the back hits it fast enough, there shouldn't be space to run. 
Looked like he had a couple of different options as far as who to throw to on that play. And who am I to say this, but I'm not sure he made the right decision. Well, the window of opportunity is always going to be small in the NFL. That's why those quarterbacks who make quick decisions and have quick releases have the most success in this league. Now a nice throw here right side. He hauls it in. And he's got another first down as the tackle's going to be made at the Patriots' 44-yard line. They give him 14 yards that time and a fresh set of downs. You can see the time and effort and thought that they put into their passing game because it was evident right there. It looks like a simple pitch and catch, but you and I both know that they have planned for this and worked hard to make it happen. On first and ten, it's Swift fighting him off. And he's going to get this inside the 30. Another nice gain. That's now 30 yards between those last two plays. Two carries for him now on the opening drive, both for good yardage. And based on film study, they thought that there was a chance to spring him more than once for some pretty good yardage in this game. Throwing on first down, Williams. And he overshot him there. It's out of bounds, incomplete. Well, a momentary speed bump there with that throw, partner. The defense had other ideas, and they're trying to mount a small stand before this drive reaches the end zone. So now second and ten after the incompletion on first down. A handoff Swift running to the left. And he'll go down here right around the 23-yard line. They get six. That'll leave them with third and four. Good, strong run against the 3-4 set. And that 3-4, you've got to have your guys up front eat up a lot of blocks. The guy playing over the center, the nose, he usually has to take on double teams. But when you're able to successfully move him, you're often able to get some yardage. And that's when linebackers have to clean up and make tackles. Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete. And he will have the Bears' first down as he'll be marked down a yard or two past the marker following a gain of six. Well, they kept it simple there, CD, only needing the short gain to move the chain, so they didn't want to go with a deep throw. They just go with that safer, shorter throw and able to convert. Nothing wrong with that at all, partner. Check the box, right? Make sure you pick up the first down. Offense is getting established. You're moving the ball. You're not turning it over. Check, check, check. They like what they're doing early in the game. And that's something you have to get ready for defensively because in today's NFL, teams will use their wide receivers on jet sweeps, end of rounds. They'll move them back in the backfield and make them running backs. Partner, this was much more of a tap pass, but effective nonetheless. And I think both guys love it. If you're a quarterback, it's an easy completion. If you're a wide receiver, you get the easy reception and also a chance to try to make a play with your feet. Call it a gain of three, but not enough to move the sticks. It'll be third and about a foot or two. Pretty good job defensively. Thought he was going to get it, but they knew where that marker was, and they stopped him just short of it. What it does is emphasize that strategic football and situational football is not just played on the offensive side, is it? Defense understanding, as you noted, where the first down marker was and making sure they... That's to Moore, he's got it! Touchdown, Bears! A seven-yard touchdown grab, and the Bears respond to that opening drive touchdown with one of their own. Those are the drives that prove a lot. You got a rookie quarterback, Charles, you're on the road, takes him down, throws the touchdown pass. And in a game like this, with, as you described, a rookie quarterback... The team usually says, okay, we got to take care of this guy. We got to protect him. But when he goes out and plays like this on the first drive on the road, he doesn't have to say, I'm here to be your leader. They just need to follow him. Santos able to tack on the extra point, and we are tied at seven. Each team's had it. Each team has scored. 7-7 here as the kick's away. And Marcus Jones going to elect to bring this one out. And he'll get it up past the 20 to about the 22.
New England with a first down as they begin the drive. And they'll be looking to build off of a nice drive last time, a drive that really relied on the quarterback. Making good decisions, distributing the ball well, distributing it accurately, keep, keeping it away from danger. A really nicely run drive. But now the defense, what adjustments do they need to make in the passing game? Pass rush, pass rush, pass <laughs> rush. Whether it's the guys huh? up front, or maybe you bring additional guys, but you've got to disrupt the timing of them throwing the football. Uh, we'll see if they can disrupt it here. On second down, a run with Gibson. And he'll get this up over the 25 to the 26. These two teams all tied after one. Start of the second quarter from Foxborough. It's the homestanding Patriots with the football. They are in need of six yards here if they hope to move the chains. On third down, he'll drop to throw. And he'll be taken down, but he does have first down yardage. Move the chains, a gain of seven on third down. Well, you can absolutely feel the thought process there. They just gave up the touchdown. So in the huddle, they're telling each other, you don't want to give it back now on a three and out. Nice job of making sure that they wouldn't, and they pick up the first down. Now on first down, he'll drop to throw it. Checking this down to Stevenson. So he'll be stopped here for no gain, and it's second down. As a defense, you're more balanced when you're in zone coverage because you're able to keep your eyes on the quarterback and see the play develop in front of you. They're able to keep the quick pass in front of them and stop it right at the line of scrimmage. Now he'll look to throw here on second and ten. Oh, he dropped it. They were looking for him in the middle third. He couldn't catch it. Now third down. It looked like they had something there, but I think that he was thinking about running with the football before he actually hauled it in, and that led to a big drop. They had the incomplete pass on second down. Now they need a big play here, third and ten. Again, he'll drop to throw. And that's going to be incomplete. The contact there enough to jar that ball free, and it brings up fourth down. Now that's a good bounce back after giving up a touchdown on the opening drive. Just one first down permitted and then out. Obviously no loss of confidence with that defense and now they get to turn it back to their offense. So they're forced to punt on fourth as this one's away. It'll be 37 yards there on the punt and the Bears take over. Chicago works their way back onto the field here for their second drive of the game. And the momentum just continuing to build and build for them. They had the touchdown, their last drive to tie the game. Now their defense does its job. And Charles, all of a sudden, they've got a chance to capture the lead here. And we're seeing a really nice exhibition of what coaches love to call complimentary football. Offense gets a tie. Defense does its job, gets the ball right back. And their teammates now have momentum. What a nice job they're doing, all doing it together. Williams throw complete there to Moore. So just three yards on the completion there, and it'll be second down. Well, if you do read man coverage, Brandon, the drag route's a pretty good one to run against it because you're running away from people on it. Here's a second down and seven from the 37. Swift going to try up the middle. There he goes, right side. And he gets this all the way down to the Patriots, 28. 70 yards rushing for him as he has been tough to stop here in this first half. Even from up here in the booth, the play-by-play -play guy could tell that there was some pretty good blocking on the right side of the line. Well, you have good eyes, and it's almost like a ballet when it's executed that well. Everyone in the right spot, everyone in sync, everyone hitting the perfect notes. A little more percussion and a lot more yeah. bass, I would think, than you get your normal ballet. But at the same time, that was well executed. On first down, Williams. Looking left side, and he's got a man. That's Moore. And down he goes, taking it inside the 10, just shy of the 5 at the 6. How about the way they're moving the ball down the field? They had a big play a moment ago. Followed it up with another nice one here. And before you know it, they're already looking at first and goal.
Looking to throw. Williams. Touchdown, Bears! Cole Komet from six yards away. And the Bears have taken the lead. As a general rule, quarterbacks don't want to lock in on a receiver before the ball is snapped. But in this case, based on the matchup he thought he was going to get, it was favorable for his tight end. He locked in on him early and found him for a touchdown. Santos now to add the PAT. And he's got it. It's now a 14-7 ball game. Just a four-play drive that time. And it was all capped off by Cole Komet with a touchdown catch. After the touchdown, here's Santos to kick this one away. And up to about the 26-yard line, just across the 25. The Patriots ready to try again on offense. That 7-0 lead of theirs short-lived as they've now given up two straight touchdowns to fall behind by seven. Yeah, but no cause for discouragement here. Yeah, they've fallen behind, but haven't they proven that they can go down and score? So what was the formula that got them down there the first time? Get back to something close to that, and maybe they can get this game tied up. The drive starts with a carry by Stevenson. And not a whole lot of room to operate there on the first down run. He gets maybe three. Well, that's just a pile of bodies there, and that's when you kind of find out who's a tough guy, right? Who can stand up and make a play? It was only a three-yard run, but for both sides, they had to walk away from that feeling like, okay, I can stand up when the going gets tough in here. Here's a second and seven. Open man, that's Henry. And Henry's going to pick up a Patriots first down. Is the tackle going to be made up at the 37? It goes as a gain of eight, and it moves the chains. I know exactly what's going to be said about that play from the defensive perspective. What's that? That's why I tell all you guys we need more than one tackler to the ball. He broke the first tackle. Luckily enough, there are more people there to get him down. On first and 10, it's Gibson. And this winds up a gain of four to the 41. Brandon, we just saw the benefits of being able to run the ball successfully. They pick up four yards on that carry. So now if you're a play caller, you can do just about anything you want. But on the defensive side of the ball, you scramble a little bit. Now you're behind trying to figure out do I need to blitz him? Do I need to pressure him? How do I gain an advantage on this snap? Looking to throw. And his throw is going to be incomplete. As a defensive back, you have some weapons at your disposal that we don't often talk about. And you can read the receiver's eyes. You can read his hands. And you know that the arrival of the ball is imminent. And that allows you to make a play on it and oftentimes knock it away. This offense so far on third down, they've been okay. Two for three thus far. This will be third and six. And he'll go down. The Bears get there for the sack. It's a loss of 10 on the sack, and it leads to fourth. Now that was a passer's nightmare. The front door totally shut down by the defense, so he kept going backwards, hoping to find another avenue of escape. It didn't exist. Here's Bryce Barringer now. Jones on the return. A pretty good punt there, but also a nice return of 12 yards. And it will be first and 10 as they take over. Well, let's shine the spotlight on the former Georgia Bulldog, DeAndre Swift, who's set to begin this next drive. And he's well on his way to a 100-yard game. He's already more than halfway there. We're only in the second quarter. And what I've always loved about running backs is they'll tell you, I had no idea how many yards I had. Right. Those guys have an innate <laughs> sense of where they are in a ball game and how many yards they've accumulated because you know they're always working towards 100. He's been working well towards 100 here. He's going to look deep for more. 
And it's incomplete. Took a shot, couldn't connect. They decided the opportunity was there and launched a deep ball, but he was unable to get away from the defender, couldn't create space, couldn't uncover the end of the route, and that one winds up incomplete. Here's second and 10 now from the 35. To throw again, Williams. And that one complete downfield to Allen. Yeah, he will go out right near the 35-yard line. A gain there of 30 big ones. That is the exact right play call against that defense. So a hat tip to the offensive play caller because he won that part of the chess match. But give credit to his players as well. They won the execution part of it. So that changes things a bit. Here's a first and 10 all the way down at the 35. They will run straight ahead with Swift. And he finds a little bit of room, enough for four yards. It'll be second down. And that was a quality play to start a new set of downs. That was simply an offensive line winning the battle up front and winning in a big way and giving their guy in the backfield a nice lane to hit. We've hit the two-minute mark of the second quarter, 14 to 7. From the 31, here's the second down and six. Back to throw. Williams got an open man. It's Scott. And that'll get him the first down as they get nine yards out of that quick slant. This has to go down as one of the simpler routes in the playbook, but oh so effective. Nice completion there. Keeps the sticks moving. Williams throwing on first down. His throw incomplete. He didn't just deny a big throw there. He broke that one up in the red zone. An excellent play. One that may help save points on the board when this drive is over. So after the incompletion on first, now second and ten. Looking to throw. Williams will try and set up the screen to Swift. They showed off a nice juke of the defender before the next wave could bring him down. They get seven out of that, so they're left with a third and three. With all the success they've had throwing the football as a pass rusher, you know you've got to come hard when you see him drop back to throw. So I really like this call to counteract that pass rush with a screen. It turns into positive yardage. A lot of times the offense says, just replace the rusher with the ball, and it turns into a good play. Now the Bears going to call the first of their timeouts as the clock stops here with 46 seconds remaining in the first half. So not quite a first and goal. It's first and 10 from the 10. Back to throw again. And that's complete to the right side. It's Allen. Now he's tackled a yard short of the marker. Good gain of nine on first down. Just need a yard here. Second and one. On the option to give to Swift here. And he's into the end zone. Touchdown, Bears. DeAndre Swift as the first half is winding down. And the Bears would extend their lead here just before halftime. And this drive, Charles, very well timed as they score with very little time remaining in this first half. And I'm reminded that they get the second half kickoff as well, so they can break this one wide open before the other guys have a chance to possess the football. Santos with the extra point, and it's now 21-7. So that drive consumes nine plays, all told, and it ends with a one-yard touchdown run.
So not much time to speak of remaining in this first half as the kicks away. Oh, a good return up past the 30. The Pats at the line, ready to go. And with decent starting field position, they're maybe only a couple completions away from field goal range. They'll set up the screen for Gibson. Now a timeout taken. Perhaps a chance for one more quick play and then another timeout if they hurry. We'll see. Second down and a yard. Now they'll throw here out of the gun. Now right to board. Now whistles and a timeout with three seconds left in the first half. throw now on the final play he's gonna throw one up for the end zone and it's knocked away and incomplete so we have come to halftime and what's already a two touchdown game as we'll send you down the coast now to Orlando that's where we find Jonathan Coachman ready with our EA Sports halftime report coach Okay, Brandon, thanks very much. And welcome in everyone to our downtown Orlando studios in this EA Sports Halftime Report. We watched a solid performance out of running back DeAndre Swift. He had a touchdown run that helped get his guys this halftime lead. Okay, Coach, thanks as always to you and the gang in Orlando as we welcome everyone back in for quarter number three. Set to resume. Here we go with the second half. The Bears holding the lead and ready to receive the kick. So here's the Bears offense now as they get set to start this third quarter. Right now, everything they touch turns to gold. This is their fourth possession. Touchdowns on their first three possessions. I mean, this defense, they can't seem to stop them. It's like they're on skates. Great analogy, Brandon, because they are pushing them back and winning everything at the line of scrimmage. They've just been laying down tracks towards the opposite end zone. So to themselves, all they're saying is, if we don't make a mistake, there's no way they can stop us. Williams now on first and 10. Over the middle, and it's caught. Keenan Allen. Usually see those guys out wide get called for holding on running plays here, a passing play. Yeah, sometimes when you get this quick screen, bubble screen, anything where they're having to block for their fellow receiver, usually at the point of attack, and this time he got caught. Back to throw, Williams. That'll be caught, it's Scott. And yeah, they'll get it all the way up about five yards shy of midfield. A well-executed 22-yard gain. And now we get into the psychology of the whole thing because a lot of teams with a two-score lead in the third quarter, they almost become defensive with their offense, just playing not to lose. I think with this team, you got to figure at this point, this is a great spot for them to go into attack mode, really try and put the hammer down and finish this one off. Here's a handoff to Swift. And they'll get this just to the 47. One-yard gain. 
Oh, there's plenty of traffic waiting for him up the middle. But give him credit, he tried barreling through anyway. They're fortunate to get a yard out of that one. Now second and nine. Looking to throw. Williams. And, oh, he's unable to hold on to that defensively. A potential game changer, but it falls incomplete. And that could have been the lifeline they needed. This is a play that could have been made. Instead, it's just going to fall incomplete. After an incomplete pass on second down, that'll leave him trying to convert on third and nine. Back to throw. Williams. He's got his target. That's complete. And he's got another first down as the tackle's going to be made at the Patriots 39. And they'll get 14 yards out of it and a fresh set of downs. So into Pat's territory now. Here's first and 10 at the 39-yard line. On the option to give to Swift here. And they will only muster a yard here to the 38. That was a really nice play, being able to stack that one up. When they get back in the huddle, he's got to he's got to tell his guys up front, great job. They kept people off of him, allowed him to run free and make the hit on the runner. And filled the gap nicely, kept him to just a one-yard gain. Here's Williams to throw on second down. Call it a gain of six on the play, and now it's third and three. Well, that's always a good place to throw it just because he's one of the biggest targets not only on this team but in the National Football League. And you and I both know the quarterbacks love these large-body tight ends, and why not? Nowadays, they're really wide receivers who are just taller and have a little bit more weight. These guys catch the football, make big plays downfield. In the old days, we wanted them to block now coaches want him to catch the football first. His fifth catch tonight, and it's good for a first down. Would it be safe to say that as precise as routes are supposed to be run in the NFL, maybe they're not quite as precise in college ball? That's accurate, yeah. And I think we saw a college route in the NFL there. Just find the soft spot, find the dead zone, and find the first down. And that's what he just did. And he'll go down right on the edge of the red zone following a pickup of about seven or eight. Looks to me like maybe there's a little attrition setting in with this drive. Because when you see that type of a run, I get the feeling the defense getting a little bit tired. And that's the last thing they need, especially when they look up at the scoreboard. From the 20, here's second and three. They go quickly here out to Moore. And they just keep marching right along. First down on a pickup of eight there. Looking to throw. Williams. Got a man and he hits him in stride. And the Bears are going to be set up with a first and goal on a pass play that moves them all the way down to the one. I think he has to be saying to himself, how did that not wind up a touchdown? Remember, he just need the tip of the ball to cross the plane. It's not going to get there, but they're going to be set up in great shape with first and goal. This offense continues to be a hot knife through butter. Three drives, three scores. And, and that is caught. Touchdown, Bears. Gerald Everett. A one-yard touchdown reception. And the Bears take the opening kickoff of the third quarter and drive right down the field to extend their lead. This is where, as a tight end, you've got to really sell that this is a run. They're going to fake the give, hope the linebackers bite, and here they do just enough. That split second, that's all it takes for that tight end to leak out into the end zone. Touchdown. Now the point after try for Santos. He knocks it through. It's 28-7. So that one a long 11-play drive. And the end result is a Bears touchdown.
Now after the touchdown here Santos to kick this one away. And this will come out to the 25 as Jones elects for the touchback. So here are the Patriots now. They get ready for their first possession of half number two. And their halftime hole now even deeper. And they need a big drive here just to answer the first touchdown of the second half scored against them. They were down at the half. Now, as you mentioned, they're down a little bit bigger. But no time for discouragement. Just got to get back to it, right? Put your shoulder against the boulder and start pushing and try and get back to where you were to start the half. Terrific running there to start the drive as that's going to go for 15 and a quick first down as well. We often give credit to the O-line there. Two tight end formation. Those tight ends block pretty well also. Yeah, and that's one of the most dynamic positions in football now. The tight ends who can block at the line of scrimmage at the point of attack, and they can also get downfield and catch the football. A give up the middle to Gibson. And a pretty good burst there as he'll get this across midfield and down to the 46. 14 yards is the pickup there and a New England first down. Absolutely love the run right there. This guy's known for his quickness, but also for his speed. He's able to get to the second level almost before you blink if you give him any type of blocking. Always talk about slot receivers, and they're usually known as quicker than fast. In this case, we've got a guy who's quick and fast, and he used it to great advantage. And he's going to take this ahead for right around three yards, but no more than that. Second down. Not a huge carry there on first down, but not all of them will be. But still, all in all, a positive play for the offense. It's all about picking up at least a few to set up what you're going to do here on second down. From the 44-yard line, here's second down and seven. Again, it's Stevenson. And he'll go down here at the 35-yard line. 44 yards now on the ground on just seven carries. They're making it look easy out there. Another first down. So, so far on this drive, let me do this little bit of math here. Four plays, three first downs. That's a pretty good recipe for success. Stevenson now on first and 10. And forget about finding a lane. He barely had time to look up before he was planted in the backfield. That's going to wind up a loss of a full three yards on first down. You've got to figure the further they fall behind, the more you think that they'll get away from the run. They're trying to stick with it, but the results, they just aren't there. Gibson here running out of the gun. Just a yard there, so it brings up a tough third and 12. That ground game contained again there, Charles, and that's really a big reason that they're trailing right now. And give a lot of credit to that defensive front. That's exactly what they worked for all week to try and take away the run game, make them one-dimensional in the battle of game plans. Theirs has been superior. Out of the gun now on third down. Oh, had his hands on it, couldn't bring it in. Pretty symptomatic of how this game's been going. We saw this a lot in the first half, and it continues. These receivers just not able to get much separation. So that means they have to win the 50-50 balls. They've got to go up with the defender and find a way to start coming down with them. And this time, contact and another incomplete pass. And on fourth down, on is the punt team sending this one away. Out of bounds and close. The question, was it a touchback? No. They'll say it crossed out at the two-yard line. Three quarters in the books. You are watching the NFL on EA Sports. Back now in Foxborough. A lot of folks starting to make their way to the parking lot. Their guys trail big here to begin quarter number four. <laughs> The Bears offense ready to go for their next drive. Well, they don't really need the points here, Charles, given what we're looking at on the scoreboard, but they've scored on three consecutive possessions, three consecutive drives, and I'm sure that they would like to keep that streak going here and continuing to pour it on. And things have gotten that way in the NFL, haven't they, partner? Because in the old days, people would, you know, they'd get off the gas a little bit, right? But now, people continue to accelerate. But we'll see what they decide to do as they come out for this one. But the way that this game has gone, they've got to be awfully happy with their execution overall. Now Williams to throw from his end zone. He'll get that complete to his tight end commit. And they'll get him down up past the 15-yard line. 
16 yards is the pickup there and a first down for Chicago. Well, normally you might say start running the football. You've got the lead here in the fourth quarter, but the way that they've passed it with such success, I don't know, maybe keep throwing it. Yeah, I think you brought up something that goes against conventional wisdom, right? In this stage of the game, you would think you would switch to a running attack, but you're exactly right. They've thrown it so well throughout the game, and trusting this quarterback, I think he continue to do so. They will get four yards here on the first down run, and that'll make it second and six. Brandon, I've got to think this offensive line has got some smiles on its faces, and, and I know it sounds crazy, but they practiced for this back in training camp. They knew they'd be in situations where it'd be extra defenders in the box coming after them, trying to keep them from locking down a game. Right now, they want to show the world they're up to the challenge. Right back to Swift again on second down. And not much doing there. Maybe a yard up to the 23. Absolutely love the effort there. The ability to flow from his inside spot and stop that one at the line of scrimmage. Nice linebacker play. New England on third down. No problems to this point. A perfect five for five. This will be third and five. Back to throw. Williams able to find the open man. That's complete. And he will have the Bears first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. He's been the go-to guy. They needed a big play there on third down. Went his way. It worked out. Doesn't matter whether they've scouted it or that they think he's going to get the ball. He has a knack for finding his way open and completing the connection. Now a give right side swift. Found a little room there as he's up to about the 37. 95 yards on the ground for him now as he has gotten better, really, as the night's gone on. Good gain there on first down. It keeps him in a running situation, probably. They did everything right on that play, didn't they? They got the leverage up front, good blocking, nice hole for him. He ends up picking up nice yardage, stays in bounds to keep the clock rolling. They are in charge of this scenario right now. They want to stay that way. And not in any rush offensively. Run blitz there defensively, something we might see more of here in the fourth quarter. I think we'll see a lot of it, and, and the difference between that and a pass blitz, pass blitz, you're just trying to get to the quarterback. You're trying to scheme someone open who will get to the QB and make sure he gets on the ground. In a run blitz, you're actually trying to cover up gaps, trying to cover up holes so they can't run the football. They'll try and run here with Swift, and he won't get to the marker. He's a yard short. A pickup of three, it leaves him with fourth and one. This late in the game, Charles, I think you maybe seriously have to think about going for it. Especially where they are in terms of field position, because this is almost like no man's land. Might hurt your punter because there might not be enough space, maybe too far for your field goal kicker. I I'm like the old rule. Possession is nine-tenths of the law. Possession is nine-tenths of winning the game. Go for it. Get the first down. Close it out. Here's Jones. 43-yard punt, but they get nine back on the return. And the Patriots take over. New England trotting into place on offense. Even though they were able to force the punt defensively, still a big hole to climb out of, especially at this late stage of the contest. They'll try and start this drive in the air. This one caught by Osborne right side. He'll be brought down on the 30-yard line after a gain of six. Defensively, they're okay with that. Short little route, tackle him inbounds. Okay. All right, cliche alert. It's time for someone to make a play because they've got to have something bigger downfield. They can't just take what they give them. They've got to force it and make something big happen for them. Now a dump off here complete. Seven yards there and a first down. Well, that was a pretty favorable situation there. What would you call that? Second and manageable? Smart play, too. Didn't force it downfield when he didn't have it. Just checked it down, let him get the first down, and that's exactly what he did. And quickly they get to the line. On first down, he'll drop to throw. Short pass caught by Henry. And a five-yard gain gets him to the 42. You got the big lead defensively. 
willing to give them that underneath stuff, right? And this is why you work on your tackling. Tackle them after the catch, inbounds, keep the clock running. Just go ahead and bleed the game out that way. Now second and five. They'll look to throw again. That is caught by Smith-Schuster. And he's going to have another first down as the tackle's made here at the Bears' 32-yard line. A good pick up there, 26 yards. A three-score game here late. You can probably rule out the comeback, but certainly some kind of a moral victory to be had if they can get a few more points to close things out. And to that end, a nice pass play there to push things downfield. Yeah, and we know in this league, a loss is a loss, and no one wants anything to count as a moral victory or, boy, something that feels a little bit cheap. But if they trim that lead down to just two scores, that's still a benefit to this squad. And now a throw on first down there, but it's incomplete. They lead big, and a major part of that has been how they've taken their play to a whole new level this second half. No points allowed since the break, and you can add another incompletion to the total number that they forced in this runaway contest. Here's second and ten. They'll stick with the passing game as he looks to throw. Pass caught here by Osborne. And he's going to have another first down as the tackle's made here at the Bears' 18. A good gain of 14 there, and it moves the chains. This defense has certainly had an outstanding second half, haven't they? I know they just gave up a first down there, and for the offense, they're hoping that that's something that they can jumpstart with and maybe start to move the ball a little bit better. But it's been tough sledding for them here the entire second half. Now a throw to the end zone on first down, but it winds up incomplete. That's coverage you'd expect to see in a tie game late. Not in a lopsided game like this. They are not letting up. Now a second and ten. Again, he'll drop to throw. And he's going to go down. He's sacked back at the 24. Andrew Billings busting through to get him for a loss of six. And you hate to say it with a rookie quarterback. He's done some good things, but overall, looked a little bit overwhelmed back there, hasn't he? He certainly has. But in his defense, he hasn't had a lot of time to throw the football. You like the way I said that? In his defense. In his defense. I got it. You yeah. see what I did there? Yeah. He needs better. And pressure coming, and they got him once again. It's Jervon Dexter who got in to drop him. Well, these guys want to do something positive as this game approaches its end, but after giving up back-to-back -back sacks, it's really been more indicative of how the game has gone for them. No choice but to go. Here's fourth down now. As expected, they're going for it to keep the drive alive. He's going to let this go. Back of the end zone. And that's going to be too high. Out of bounds and incomplete. They had to go for it with such little time remaining, and this 10-play drive winds up yielding nothing. So they tried to go for it for pride, but it really wouldn't have mattered. This one, it was already determined. No doubt about it. This one was over a while ago. From the 32 now, here's first and 10. They'll start on the ground with Swift. 105 yards rushing for him now in the ball game. Well, that last run makes this a 100-yard night. I've loved the way he's hit the holes. He's been quick, he's been decisive, and he's been a whole lot of fun to watch. So this one in the win column for the Chicago Bears. Well, on one side of this, Charles, an impressive victory. On the other, I mean, you think about it, they scored in the first quarter, but then they didn't score in quarters two, three, or four. They're going to have a lot of work to do before stepping back on the field. Yeah, it'd be an interesting tape to analyze, won't it? Because why did it work in the first quarter, but nothing in quarters two, three, and four? So we always talk about adjustments. You don't just wait till halftime. You do it series to series. They'll be working on that in preparation for their next game. That'll do it for us, for Charles Davis and all our hardworking crew. I'm Brandon Gordon. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. For more, 